Brooklyn, 1961. A cramped apartment in the projects. The smell of burnt coffee lingers in the air as a seven-year-old boy watches his father nurse a broken leg, unemployed and uninsured. This isn't just another hard luck story. It's the crucible that forged a coffee revolution. Fast forward to 1987, that same boy, now a man, stands in a tiny Seattle coffee shop. The rich aroma of freshly ground beans fills his nostrils. At this moment, a vision crystallizes, one that will transform a simple cup of joe into a global phenomenon. This isn't just about coffee, it's about turning a daily grind into a multi-billion dollar empire. Did you know that 242 investors rejected Howard Schultz before securing funding for his wild idea? Or that he once spent his last dime on a cup of coffee that would change his life forever? In this video, we're diving into the incredible rise of Starbucks, but not the Starbucks you think. This isn't a tale of boardrooms and billion dollar deals, this is the story of a young man who, against all odds, built a coffee empire from the ground up. So get ready to be floored by the twists, turns and jaw-dropping moments that paved Howard Schultz's path from Brooklyn streets to the apex of the coffee world. But before that, subscribe to the channel and explore the secret behind Howard Schultz's success. Howard Schultz's story starts in the gritty streets of Brooklyn. Born on July 19, 1953, he grew up in a low-income family in the Canarsie Bayview Houses, a public housing project. Life wasn't easy for him as his father, Fred, struggled to hold steady jobs and the family often found themselves just scraping by. Once, he said that one of his most vivid childhood memories was seeing his father come home from a grueling days of work, frustrated and defeated, with barely enough money to support the family. Despite the hardships, young Howard had a spark of ambition and curiosity, so he found solace in sports and by playing football, he earned a scholarship to Northern Michigan University. But it wasn't just sports that intrigued him. His first encounter with coffee happened when he worked at a local coffee shop. He wasn't just making coffee, he was learning about business, customer service, and the joy a simple cup of coffee could bring to people. Howard's early experiences in Brooklyn instilled in him an entrepreneurial spirit. He saw coffee as a beverage and an opportunity to build something significant. Those early struggles and experiences shaped his vision, pushing him to dream big and work harder to achieve those dreams. And you know what? Howard Schultz's life changed upside down in 1981 when he stumbled upon a little coffee shop in Seattle. It wasn't just any coffee shop, it was Starbucks. At the time, Starbucks was a quaint store selling high-quality coffee beans and equipment far from the global giant we know today. Schultz, captivated by the rich aroma and unique atmosphere, knew he had found something special. Schultz met Jerry Baldwin and Zev Siegel, the founders of Starbucks. They were passionate about coffee, but their vision was limited to selling beans and equipment. Schultz saw beyond that. He envisioned Starbucks as a place where people could gather, relax and enjoy a perfectly brewed cup of coffee, a third place between home and work. Schultz's vision was taking shape, but he knew he had to convince the rest of the team to share his dream. He spent countless hours talking to the founders, persuading them to take a chance on his ideas. Slowly but surely, they began to see the magic in Schultz's vision. But they were hesitant. No one likes transition, specifically in business. They had no interest in turning their beloved coffee shop into a cafe. With his passion and persistence, Schultz won over the hearts of the Starbucks team, and his vision became the driving force behind the company's growth. Finally, in 1982, his effort became fruitful. He was no longer just an employee. He was a partner, a leader and a visionary who would change the face of coffee forever. Undebted, Schultz joined Starbucks as Director of Retail Operations and Marketing in 1982. He was trying to transform Starbucks into an experience, not just a store. Howard Schultz's journey took a dramatic turn when he decided to carve his path in the coffee world. Frustrated by the original Starbucks owners' lack of interest in his grand vision, Schultz decided to take matters into his own hands. In 1983, Howard travelled to Milan for a houseware show, clueless about its effect on him. Strolling through the city, he marvelled at the abundance of coffee bars, discovering the Italian love for café culture. One day, he stepped into a café and ordered a café latte, intrigued by its blend of steamed milk and coffee, a new experience for him. Unlike Starbucks' focus on selling coffee as a product, 
Howard was captivated by the communal atmosphere of Italian coffee bars, where people gathered to relax and chat. Inspired, he returned to Seattle to recreate this experience in America. Back at Starbucks, Howard shared his idea with the founders, but they hesitated to change the business model. They preferred to stick with selling coffee beans and equipment, reluctant to venture into cafe territory. Howard struggled with his loyalty to Starbucks and his dream of introducing Italian coffee culture to America. Eventually, realizing he couldn't pursue his vision within Starbucks, he left the company in 1985 and started his own venture. In 1985, Schultz founded Il Giornale, his very own coffee company. He poured his heart and soul into it, determined to create something extraordinary. The excitement was palpable. Imagine walking into one of those early Il Giornale locations, rich coffee aromas wafting through the air, customers chatting animatedly, baristas expertly crafting espresso drinks. It was a hit, a resounding success that proved Schultz was onto something big. But Schultz wasn't content to stop there. His eyes were set on an even bigger prize. 1987, the original Starbucks owners decided to sell their company and Schultz saw his chance. It was now or never. With bated breath, he seized the opportunity and acquired Starbucks, merging it with Il Giornale. Schultz's Starbucks was no longer just a place to buy coffee beans. It was a vibrant, bustling hub where people gathered, connected and experienced coffee in a new way. After taking the helm as CEO in 1987, Howard Schultz laid the groundwork for Starbucks' extraordinary expansion. He figured out a business approach that wasn't just successful in one place, it could be replicated globally. This meant big growth opportunities, not just in the US but around the world. By 1998, Starbucks had opened its stores in Japan, the Philippines, the UK and more. In 2000, Howard stepped down as CEO to focus solely on his global expansion. They were practically popping up new stores like Clockwork, five a day or even every five hours, 24-7. Between 1998 and 2008, Starbucks went from 1,900 stores to 17,000. It seemed like Starbucks was on every corner and people were swapping their kitchen mugs for those famous to-go cups. Schultz transformed Starbucks from a mere idea into a cultural phenomenon. Who would have thought folks would queue up by the millions to drop four bucks on a cup of coffee? It was a wild ride, transforming neighborhoods into Starbucks hotspots practically overnight. Schultz's persistent determination and rigid passion had paid off. His Starbucks rose and there was no stopping it. The company made 3.28 billion US dollars in net income and 32.25 billion US dollars in revenue in 2022, which is a great amount. As of 2022, the headcount network consisted of more than 402,000 individuals. Also, there are currently over 35,000 Starbucks stores operating across 80 countries. He knows he's not just building a coffee shop, but crafting an experience. When he took the reins, he focused on customer experience and quality coffee. He wanted Starbucks to be a haven, a third place where people could escape the daily grind and savor each moment. After Howard Schultz became CEO in 1987, Starbucks undertook an ambitious expansion. By 1998, they had stores in Japan, the Philippines, the UK and more. However, the 2007 financial crash hit hard, causing Starbucks' stock to drop by 50% as consumers cut back on spending. This crisis exposed underlying issues, including customer dissatisfaction and a diluted Starbucks experience due to rapid expansion. In 2008, facing financial trouble, Starbucks brought back Howard Schultz as CEO. He halted expansion to focus on revitalizing the brand. Schultz aimed to make Starbucks more than just a place for coffee, it needed to be an experience. He reintroduced in-house grinding and mandated the removal of automatic espresso machines to restore the craft of coffee making. One significant move was closing all US locations for a day to retrain over 135,000 baristas. This overhaul worked, with the company's stock soaring by 143% in 2009 and same-store sales rebounding. Starbucks continued to thrive, expanding to over 32,000 stores globally. Beyond coffee, Starbucks has become a real estate powerhouse. Their adeptness at choosing locations has increased property values in the neighborhoods where they open. This strategy has faced criticism for homogenizing neighborhoods, but it hasn't slowed Starbucks' expansion. Moreover, Starbucks evolved into a pseudo-bank through its app, where customers can pre-load money for purchases, providing Starbucks with an interest-free loan. This financial aspect has disturbed traditional banks, which see Starbucks as a financial entity. 
A key part of Starbucks's future lies in its upscaled stores, such as Starbucks Reserve Roasteries. These massive experimental spaces have been highly successful, attracting tourists and generating substantial revenue. Howard Schultz's journey from poverty to building a coffee empire showcases the power of hard work and strategic vision. Starbucks's success wasn't solely about coffee, it was about creating an experience. Schultz's return as CEO shifted the focus to what mattered, revitalizing the brand and propelling Starbucks to new heights. Now, are you impressed with today's story? What lessons did you learn from it? Share with us in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.